All right, guys, today I'm going to give a quick overview of the example NetMessage subscriber. This is a module that lets your particular module serve as a source of data, and other modules can subscribe to that and be a sync with respect to the data generated by the NetMessage subscriber module that I'm going to show here. So, uh, what we will typically do is again all we have to do is clone that and we can copy paste all of the text inside of the AFTR hub um, readme that includes the URL to this example net message subscriber so I will open this up run CMake I already have it uh, created so then I will open up the solution and what this module will let me do is uh, it just generates a video stream. So I'll bring it over here. And uh, well, there we go. Let's bring this up. And when I run this module, We, we see this example right here. And in this example, I have basically just attached a camera, a virtual vision sensor inside of this little moon. And the moon is sort of just spinning around the uh, airplane. I can use the um, GUI to move the camera closer and also make it spin around a little faster. Uh, but what I'm gonna do with that is we're gonna look at this GUI right here. So if I say, hey, let's show the subscribers it will show right now that this module is listening on UDP and TCP port 12676. So uh, let's now go back to our hub module and use our trusty old example, which is just the image generator streamer, which serves as a sync to image streams. Um, I have already compiled this. So again, I will take the executable and I will put it in the CWIN64 folder. Actually, I lied. I want to show the uh, stream viewer. I'm sorry, yeah, we want the stream viewer. So I'm gonna get the stream viewer executable and I'm going to put it in the CWIN64 folder and now I can double click it from here. So now I have two modules open. In this module, I can select that I wanna to connect to 127.0.0.1 port 12676. That will connect this viewer to this module. So if I hit connect, um, oh, I have some breakpoints on in here. Uh, my bad, let me get rid of these guys. All right. I hit connect and we are now connected, but what I need to do is send a net message live stream uh, which will uh, net message subscribe to a Gcam live stream. So I'll check this little box and I'll say, hey, let's subscribe. And when I click subscribe, notice that this current subscriber count went to one. And when this went to one, I now start seeing the um, image stream appearing over here. We know that it's working because if I decrease the radius, we can see that we're getting the live stream uh, and another thing I can do is if I go back and open multiple instances of this module. So let's go back and let's just open up a couple different stream viewers. So here we have yet another stream viewer. Um, here's our other stream viewer. And let's go back to our... Oops. Okay, so here's our stream viewer. Here's our other stream viewer. And where's our other one? Here it is. All right. So now I'm going to connect again and I will do another live stream. And now I have two modules that are the stream viewers right here. We have a stream viewer and a stream viewer, and they are both receiving imagery from the subscriber count. We can see that the subscriber count is now currently two. If I take one of them and hit disconnect, the subscriber count immediately drops to one. And if I reconnect and subscribe again, it jumps back up to two. Okay, so this is sort of the behavior that we want to see. Um, and I could even open up a third example. So here is uh, yet a third 
streamer. Let's connect, live stream, subscribe. Now we see we have three. Uh, all of them are connected to the same module. Again, you could do this over the uh, over a network and it would work completely fine. Each one of these is a separate TCP stream. Um, so what I can do now is if I close all three of the viewers, my subscriber count will drop from three to zero. So now it dropped from three to zero. Everything is good. Um, and I can close this module. So one other thing I want to show you though, is if I go to the net message subscriber and, uh, let me just build the release and debug, which I have compiled and let's go, for example, into the release and, and just run the release. If I launch the net message subscriber, the first time I launch it, it says, Hey, I'm listening on UDP 1267, uh, six and TCP 12676. But if I open up another module of the exact same type on the exact same port, notice that I now get these warnings saying that the module couldn't bind to the TCP IP port. Is it already in use? Then it says for the TCP, it says TCP address reuse net messages are probably not arriving. What this means is you only want one process to use one protocol like TCP or UDP on one port number and you can't have multiple bound to the same one simultaneously. Otherwise the operating system won't know what packets are supposed to go where, right? So that that's uh, an operating system limitation. So this functionality is already built into the net message subscriber. Uh, let's do a quick overview of how this code works. So the main thing that we care about is this little GUI right here where you can just pound include I am GUI net message subscriber dot H. And then how do you plumb it into your GL view? Uh, in the GL view, I have created uh, one instance of my I am GUI net message subscriber called the subscriber GUI. And um, the rest of the code in here is simply to create a virtual vision sensor that spins around and I, I put the camera where that moon is that was spinning around the Gulf Stream. Um, and so in the GLVU's load map, the only code we add in right here is a little Lambda that will show the net message subscriber GUI, right? And that just calls our, our subscriber GUI. And then we hook that in where we create that drop down menu called net message GUI. And under that, we have the uh, option called show subscribers. That calls when you click that checkbox and that checkbox becomes true or checked, then it will always call show net message subscriber GUI once per frame, which effectively means it will draw the GUI. Okay. So this is how the plumbing hooked everything in. Then what we have to do in our GL view, is subscribe to net messages. Um, the only one we actually need to subscribe to in this module for the example net message subscriber is to subscribe only to listen to subscribe live stream send Gcam image, right? So when you want to subscribe to something, we have a very simple net message. All this subscription has is um, if we if we hop to the declaration it doesn't do too much at all. Um, yeah, it, it, it sends one integer um, and that, that integer doesn't even need to do anything. So it, it doesn't do huh, much at all other than notify, hey, I want to subscribe. And when that subscription happens, this message call, the, the, the message arrives in this callback and we say, hey, GUI subscriber, we call on net message subscribe arrived. And if we look at this, then there's only two functions in the, in the GUI that we really care about. One of them is the event handler that says when the subscribe arrives, here is the message that you want to process. Then the only other one we need to implement is send net message to all subscribers. And then we send the net message. Now what you can do in your module is you copy paste this uh, net message subscriber. And again, where is this net message subscriber? Well, one, it, one is in the example net message subscriber, but it will also be a part of the after util libs. So it's going to reside right here. The latest version of the I am GUI 
netmessagesubscriber.hncpp will always sort of reside in this folder and it will be kept up to sync with the example net message subscriber as well. But in the GUI, it's uh, not, not all that complicated. So um, the draw just draws all the GUI and it accesses the operating system's port to make sure that we're successfully listening. So if you see when your GUI pops up, if you see that red text, that's a strong sign that it's not working right, probably because you have another copy of the module already running. So that's just the drawing. When the on net message subscribe arrives, this is the subscription me me uh, message. Then all this code does is it goes into the message and grabs the underlying TCP connection and it saves that TCP section uh, session in a map. Okay. Then that map, whenever there is a message, like a new GCAM image that is ready to send things out, it will send a copy of that net message to every endpoint in that map list. And that map is just, just a um, string to, to TCP, TCP session. session. And that, that string is, is the IP, IP colon port number for the um, connected, connected module. module. So, so anyway, anyway, all we, we do when, when, when a net, net message arrives is, is insert, insert that endpoint into, into our, our list of subscribers. subscribers. And then when we produce a message, for example, the net message send GCAM image that we will stream to all of the subscribe modules, we just iterate over all of these subscribers. We ensure that the TCP session is still active and no errors have occurred. If any errors have occurred, like maybe you closed one of the stream viewers or it's shutting down so the TCP session is closing. If there's any errors, the subscriber is automatically removed. Otherwise, everything is good to go. So we asynchronously enqueue that message to be sent to the list of all the subscribers. If any errors occurred with a particular TCP session, that is added to a list of subscriptions to erase and they are erased right here. I do that all at the end to avoid invalidating any iterators as I loop through my list of subscribers. So that's basically how the whole thing works. In the GL view, the, all the logic that does stuff is in the update world. The first thing that happens is if the Gulf Stream and the Moon are created, then we effectively just animate that. So we can see right here, hey, we have the, uh, the Moon spinning around over here. And so we animate that. Then I created a virtual vision sensor that just grabs a screenshot from the perspective of the moon. So you see this little X axis, the red thing pointing at the aircraft that serves as the source for this little viewer right here. Right. And that's how, if I decrease the radius, we get closer to the airplane and all that kind of stuff. So, um, I use a virtual vision sensor. And then in that virtual vision sensor, I do not render the moon or the moon's axes or the GUI. Because if the camera is in the dead center of this moon, then if I draw this world, all I see is the inside of the moon and the inside of those axes. So we don't want that. We also don't want to draw the GUI recursively because then you get like a recursive mirroring pattern. So we don't need that. So I hide those in this ignore list. Then every frame, I set the pose of my virtual vision sensors camera to the pose of the moon. Then I capture an image. Then I just call this little function right here that converts a texture, which is an OpenGL texture, to a net message. And under the hood, all that does is it uses a pixel buffer object to asynchronously stream texture data from the GPU to the CPU. After the texture arrives on the CPU, uh, we convert it into a set of raw bytes. I allocate memory for those raw pixel bytes and stuff them into an RGB image, which is just an interleaved RGB uh, one byte per color channel. So red, green, blue is 24 bits. Um, then I create a net message. I move the image into that net message. I get a timestamp for the, the uh, chrono, and then I return that message. So this is now the message. 
and then to use it, line 123, this is the key point, I call my GUI, which is subscriber GUI, and I say dot, send net message to all subscribers. If I F12 into there, this will take that message and subscribe it or send it to all of the subscribers as long as all the TCP connections are still active. Uh, yeah, so that pretty much summarizes how you can use the net message uh, subscriber. All right, thanks.